Hello and welcome to another episode of Face to Face. And today we are coming to you from the office of the first Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Member of Parliament for Bekwai, the Honorable Joe Osei Wusu. Honorable, welcome to Face to Face. Thank you very much. Joe Weiss, strange <laughs> nickname one would say. Where did that come from? Well, it came from my secondary school. In our days, we didn't call it senior high school, we called secondary school. I attended driving secondary school in Asante. Um, you know, at that age, I was 14 when I started for one. And it was in vogue to have a nickname. Usually, Joe comes with Big Joe. But I had seniors, particularly, I think, senior. Is Joe Jesse, I think? We called him Big Joe. He's a sports prefect. Mm. Ah. So. One of my mates said, then, why don't you take Joe Weiss? So it was a suggestion. Okay, yeah, and I loved it. And I also know that the name Kweju, I was a Monday, I'm a Monday born, mm. called Kweju. The Kweju has a Mrani in a kind of Sante called Kweju Kutu Nyanseni. Oh. So every Kweju is supposed to be Nyanseni. So it was nice, it rhymed. Joe Weiss, but it, it was popularized by him. He wrote it at the back of my shirt, uh, the collar. <laughs> so as I moved about, people would pronounce it, uh, Joe Weiss, Joe Weiss, and it stuck. I loved it. And what, what were the dreams like for a young man of your age growing up in Bekwai? I think it's from 1969, 70, I, I I thought I dreamt that I would be a member of parliament. Really? Yes. My father used to send me to buy newspapers. And every time there was a column called Today in Parliament, before I brought it to him, on the way I would have finished reading that, I started reading quite early. I, I loved reading much early. So from that time, I was always reading proceedings in parliament, 69, 70, up to the cool time in 71. Then, Returned 79. And then in 1979, I remember vividly, or was it 79 80, President Liman's government, some two ministers were dismissed mm. Rand Carl Randolph and Joe Randolph. I think Carl Randolph criticized the government, or the other Joe Randolph who criticized. One of them was Minister for Interior, and one was Minister for Justice, Attorney General. And one was dismissed, and the other came to criticize further, and he was also dismissed or resigned. And I told myself, if they were MPs, nobody could have dismissed them mm. for speaking their mind. I was in secondary school then. I love my independence, and I like to think the way I think and state my position clearly. So. I knew that someday, if I was going to go into government, I want to be an MP, where I will not be subject to the direction, so I can speak my mind freely. But I'm a people's person. Mm. I like to get things done. So at a much younger age, I formed the Bekwai Youngsters Association. That was 1979, I was 17 years. There was no youth group. So I started as a student union. Then Mr. Osubuating, he was the youth coordinator then. We went to him and he said, look, you have a lot more youthful people than students. So you're better off blending it, calling it a youth association. I, I recall at that time, I went to one of my seniors, Jude Edubuachi. And he said he had been part in forming the Sunyani Students Union. So, and then my friend Patrick Adakwa, he is now the director of administration at DVLA. Mm. So, on vacations, we're just walking about. We started discussing why can't we form a union so we can have something meaningful to do to support our society. That's where the dream started from. Then we met with our seniors, and the Bekwai Youngsters Association was formed. Then the seniors, the university dons then came in. I was a young boy, so said, you be the PRO. 
I was just happy to be the PR, even though I was the originator. <laughs> but I was happy to learn under their feet. I was happy to be around the seniors. Some of them, uh, COP Edupoku, who has just been made the director of uh, Iyoko. They were the seniors then. I looked up to them and they motivated me in the way they have achieved. At that time, the motivation was school get to invest in. Money was very little, it was not part of the things we thought about. Mm. Achieving means getting to invest it to do a program and I'm happy I learned under their feet. So I spent most of my youthful time being um, uh, uh, in, in, in the choir we, we used to say when we, that we grew up in the streets, could go to anybody's house visit any friend, we walk distances across visiting friends, and we moved in groups. Sometimes we move to play football, we get into these games sometimes. But the Youngsters Association got us focusing on development matters. One of our most effective chairmen was called Chimenu. Mm. I think he's just retired from commercial bank, so very active. But uh, he changed our focus. He said, listen, we cannot be just a group, call ourselves um, pressure groups, just criticizing what everybody does without we ourselves getting involved. So we should change our focus of being just critics and be active participants in the development of the community. So we started cleaning up towns, helping to set up new electric depots. So this was merely social. You hadn't become politically engaged. There until was this very point. little political activity then. Talking mm. about 79. Yeah. Uh, These were revolutionary days. Revolutionary days came. The late Osu Kwating, he was a high court judge. He died a few years ago as a high court judge. Yeah, he was a good writer, prolific writer, having at that age. He was a six former then and he joined in so we could write. We started taking on the chiefs. Why is this not happening? But we realized that <laughs> if you don't get involved, you understand why things are not happening. If you participate in it, then you're ahead. So our approach changed. Mm. And we worked a lot together to help build our society. Then from there I went to the university, but I always returned to Bekwai. After law school, though, my elder brother, who was like my father, I lived with him all through, was transferred from Kwasi to Kofodia. So I followed him to the Kofodia when I was in law school. Mm. If you look at my law certificate, I'm Joseph Osewusu of Kofodia. That was where <laughs> my address was. You've there. taken the Bekwai praise. That's right. But in in... I returned to live at Bekwai when my father died in 1990. From 91, 92, I was living at Bekwai. No, my father died in 93, yes. So I, I, I moved, I practiced law in Kofodia for four years. Then I relocated, I lived at Bekwai for one year and then moved back to Kumasi. It was during that period that I got actively involved in politics, local politics. Mm. In 94, I contested and won as assemblyman yeah. for Bekwai, the first assembly under the constitution. But then I had also joined the MPP um, local party organization. So I was What was the attraction? You um, joined it two years after I had been formed. Um, when, in the 92 elections, I was in Gofrudia. Mm. I was just participating, following my seniors uh, on our way to um, the late Sibeboa, the MP for Kufudia, his father. He was the first MPP candidate mm -hmm. in Kufudia, but we boycotted that election, so he didn't contest again. And then from there, I moved to Bekwai. So when I came to Bekwai, I straight away joined the NPP, and then I became a polling station chairman. Mm -hmm. I started as a polling station chairman. Then I was elected elector area. Today we call it elector area coordinator, but at that time about 20 polling stations together. We call, them, we call it central, we call it central 
ward. I became the chairman there. And, and subsequently, in 2000, I was elected constituency chairman. Mm. So I was very actively involved in the 96 and 2000 elections before um, our party won. Okay. I'm, I'm interested because you've gone through the mill, local governance, right up to where you are now. And we'll have a conversation about that. But you spoke to me about that dream as a young man of becoming a parliamentarian. It almost didn't happen because you lost the primaries and decided to run as an independent candidate. Was yes. that still in, you, because you were that intent on seeing through that dream? Yes, certainly. Even if I hadn't contested as independent at that time, I would still have become MP because that was my dream. I, I, I still find that a bit regrettable that I had to leave my party to contest independent. Mm. But I did what I did at the time because I was responding to the call of my community. I had to do that if my party, and frankly, if you know. just precedent you set. Dangerous? Well, maybe. But in many ways, it helped reform some of the things that we all knew were wrong in manipulating elections, and police station, and other things, but which were, were overlooking. Mm -hmm. Right. But uh, even though it was called independent, it was practically the party people who, who followed me. It was a kind of protest against the structure, the structural defect which led to uh, the sitting MP being um, retained as the party's candidate. Mm, itself. Uh, Anna Bledouze. Yes. I didn't have to bring any people from elsewhere. It's the same party polling station executive who were not satisfied with the outcome of the results, who abandoned the party and followed me. The same people who ordinarily vote and support MPP who at that time supported me. So in many respects, it was MPP people demonstrating displeasure with the electoral system. I have, if at any point in time I suggested in my campaign that I was against NPP at that election, I would have lost. Mm. Throughout my campaign, I made it clear that this is not about myself and NPP. It was just that the people didn't like the candidates that was put at the time. So everywhere I went, it was NPP people who came out and supported me. And it was also because I was a very well-known and active participant in all act MPP activities prior to that. Let, let's talk about the legislature because you are, you, are now with the leg you are now with the legislature. You had achieved that dream. What exactly do you see the ideal parliament to be? Ideal parliament, in my view, is a parliament where members of parliament are very well supported by research materials and information to enable them effectively oversight the activities of the executive, make laws which is a true reflection of the thinking of their constituents, and are able to ensure that law and order through legislation reign supreme. Um, you know, in this office, uh, it's a leader's office, so to mm -hmm. speak. So I have a four member staff one usher, one security, one driver, and one secretary. If I need research done, I go to the research department of the whole parliament. The staff there are less than 10. The entire parliament of Ghana? Yes. The research department, all the team, and the experience and competence of uh, varies from the very best to the beginners. So there's a lot of stress on the research staff. So unless you, yourself, have a lot of industry 
and rely on people with information outside. Often, your, the information available to you is not complete. Mm. There are people who are like the majority leader. I, I call him uh, a nocturnal being. He will sit through till the next morning to get all the information. They work themselves out. In 2010, we were asked to get national service persons as research assistants. I, I told myself, let me get the best I can get from the national service person. So I went to the law school. I said, can you give me one of your best people? At least I want somebody who can differentiate between evidence and rumor. I was given one. But then I realized that However good a person is academically, he's still a beginner. The more biggest defect each any MP has is a research support that mm. is not often available. Sometimes you're caught unaware. Suddenly, you're asked to present a paper, or a motion is on the floor. You probably wasn't aware and you want to do some quick research, you rely on internet information which is not always accurate. You rely on, for as an example, I'll give an example. I was, I led a delegation of parliament to Indonesia. In the program, it was not indicated that I will present a paper on um, solar energy or the non what do you call renewable energy. energy but when we went there and we were registering show that i had to present the paper the following morning the clerk who was with us was also the clerk to the majority leader so she quickly picked some information that had been used and forwarded them to me i had to strive to make sense out of that in order to present at that point, I was the face of Ghana. Whatever I presented is like Ghana speaking. Now, if I had known prior to that, what I would have done was to use the research information here. But ordinarily, at any point in time, I should have people who have the expertise in the area when presenting a paper who would provide the information mm. to enable me that is the one weakness in, in Parliament. But there are those who also say, well, you can afford to hire, you can afford to upgrade. Why are you not doing so and complaining about it? Don't you have money? You mean a sales or Parliament? Parliament. The institution of Parliament has re as re much resources as are approved and released to it by by Ministry of Finance, Parliament approves. It's one of our, part of our budget that each member should have a research assistant. Mm. It was just approved. Some have recruited. Not all of us have recruited, but this office should have its own research department. Mr. Speaker's office should have its own research department. The leadership offices must have their own research department, which are lacking for the time being because we are using a pool. Some from here, we have um, a department within the research, the governance, uh, infrastructure, resources. But even that, because it's a pool, you hardly get the best across board. You are watching face to face with the First Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Zenabu Jose Usu. When Face to Face returns, we will find out about why Parliament has such a negative public image. Face to Face returns. Welcome back to Face to Face. Now, Honorable, do you get the feeling or the feedback that the public, and for that matter, I mean the electorate, are out of love with Parliament? We've heard members of parliament sometimes say, well, the public perhaps don't understand us mm. enough. To a large extent, I think many people evaluate and equate parliament to 
infrastructure development. And it is amply represented in the recent research report published by a lecturer at the University of Ghana, Political mm. Science Department. That you contested? Well, we are saying that that report, it confirms what is known already, that there's a dichotomy, a disconnect between what the average electorate is expecting of an MP and what the constitution, the responsibility the constitution gives an MP. The average person voting in a, a district or a constituency is voting because he hopes that you, through his vote, you will fix the roads, build the schools, provide public toilets, and the social infrastructure. Whereas the constitution gives that responsibility to the district and municipal assemblies and the chief executives. The role that parliament plays in that discourse is not visible. But you make it visible when you go and, or you place that honors on yourself when you are campaigning and you say, I will help. That is what you say. I will help I to bring know. this to you. I don't Why do you then run away from the responsibility? You know, I will help. That's, it means that I will ensure that money is delivered to your assembly for that. Don't we do that? Mm. The part which I think of people misconceive is that in the constitutional arrangement we have without parliament, no other agency which is government can work, can have money. Unfortunately, people don't, are not interested in the process of the executive getting the money to do the work. All they are interested in is that the road is being fixed. But how did the ministry get the money? Where is the source? That part is hardly discussed. But in the current constitutional arrangement, let me emphasize again, without parliament, no agency, public agency, can function. Nobody can be paid for work done, either contractor or employee. And it's simple. The constitution gives the power of the past to parliament. It is parliament that authorizes the president and his ministers to tax you, mm -hmm. whether it, you're in the private sector or in the public sector, you're a trader. Or the tax you pay, it is because parliament by law says, Minister of Finance, take 15% of his income, take 5% as uh, what we call retention. Take 12% of the duty. Now, when the law has passed, that is when every, um, whether it is Ghana Revenue Authority, whether it is uh, Ports and Harbors Authority, whether it is the Minerals Commission, or whichever agency, that will rely on that law to take the money. And where does it start from? It starts from the budget. Mm. It is through the budget that government proposes. Give me the power to take so much taxes. If I take those taxes, I will get this amount of money. If I, when I get that amount of money, I will use it this way. This part will pay the interest on the loans we have taken. This part will pay salaries. This part will go to district assemblies. This part will go to a health fund. This part will go to the road fund. This part will go. Without parliament, none of those will happen. And then they will say, if I get all the money I have programmed, it will come to 87% of all the money I need for the year. So give me power to take loans to support that. I said, okay. 
once we have reviewed the document, then we pass what we call Appropriations Act. That is what gives the Minister of Finance the power to spend the money. Right? Mm -hmm. Then in the course of the year, because we have already approved that will permit you to borrow, for each loan, it will come to Parliament. And under the budget, you approved that you allow me to take euro bond to supplement the budget. So, I'm going to float this bond. I inspect, intend to raise this much to do this purpose. Then Parliament will debate it and give him the approval. Now, in all this, how will the Minister of Finance get money without Parliament? How will the local government ministry get money? How will the common fund? Well, how will money go into the common fund? So, probably that part is not discussed often. Mm. So people don't realize that it is their representatives parliament, in parliament that give the power to take the tax, to spend the money that they have. And that without them, the governance structure is not practicable. Okay. So it looks like you are being, you, you, from what you are saying, everything that comes in terms of development is coming from the member of parliament, only that it cannot be attributed in singular terms to them and basically what the electorate is looking for your engagement has become one of almost a transactional nature he's expecting that the only time i see my mp working is when he puts his hand in his pocket and or, gives me x or, or, or when y. the classroom he wants is being constructed unfortunately because of that we take advantage and take credit Mm -hmm. for things being done in our constituency. If it is done in your constituency, it gives you credit. Mm -hmm. If it is not done, they hold you responsible. So we hear people say, I mean, MP, me trouble, I'm not done to president, I'm not I'll vote for the president, I'll vote for the MP. Mm. Okay. If you can change the MP, the money, if it is not there, the president can't do anything with it anyway. But if you're going to hold somebody responsible, <laughs> you should hold the one who has the purse, the one who has the money, the one who has been authorized to take the tax and spend on their projects. Parliament has done its part, giving you the power to take the tax, um, authorize you to spend. But we must accept as a people that sometimes we 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 talk about providing social infrastructure and, and fiscal infrastructure as if we have all the money sitting there but we are not using it or that NPs are using it on themselves or executive now they use the term politicians mm. are using it on themselves I encourage us in our social and our discussions to look at all the revenue we will get in a year mm -hmm. and compare to the cost of all the things we want in a year and be fair to ourselves. Have we provided sufficient resources for the government to perform the things we want? But Anabu Jawais, you don't tell us these things when you're campaigning. We tell you in the budget every year. It's too technical for the people you go okay. and speak to when you are looking for votes. No. When I go there, the argument is, first, I contested as an independent member of parliament in 2008. I went with my agenda. If you vote for me, I expect that this resource will come to me as MP. I saw that um, common fund, I will get this much. If I get this much, these are the things I'll do. I spoke as me, as I also. I expect that get fund. I later found out that indeed the information on which I was campaigning was exaggerated. Mm. Um, an MP showed me a check at the time. And apparently it was a combination of about three or four years, as I do now. The check, which I think it was 50,000 or so, but I was given the impression that it is annual. 
And so I use that to build my campaign message. That every year I expect to get this much from Get.